I'm on my way up to Jarvis Creek Plateau and that's the plateau I could see when I was at the summit of Mount Grania and there's three in a row Lawson, Grania and Jarvis and this will be my third one so quite looking forward to it So, so long to the uh, Bathanga Recreation Reserve. Great place. I'll be back, I'm sure. At least I know now. And you could car camp here, then go off riding and leave your car. So it's great to know this is here. I've set off a little bit later than I wanted. It's half past nine, just gone. Um, Some lovely horses. Hello, Chippity Chops. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> Hello. Hello, beautiful. The Thanga Pony Club. Oh, might get up this hill if I race down it. I've just ridden down that hill. I'm not getting very far. It's nearly 10 o'clock already and I'm still in Bathanga and it looks like there's a massive, two massive hills to climb. So I'll be pushing those. But uh, I've ordered myself a nice soya latte that I'm having here. This nice little cafe comes store. Next door is the post office very quaint what a lovely little town used to be much bigger um, due to gold being found in the area it's a sort of historic town there's some lovely buildings here lots of information so they've also got a nice pub uh, here in Bathanga so while I was at the general store, I asked if they had some bread I could buy. He gave me two slices of raisin toast, uncooked, so I can cook them later. Um, but he wouldn't take any money for them. So that's David and Kate at the um, Bathanga General Store Cafe. Thank you so much. Not getting very far, not even out of Bathanga yet. Look at this uh, novel um, post box. Mounted on an old bike. Fantastic. So I'm completely blown away by Bathanga. That's it there, nestled between two hills, sitting on the hillside. And it's surrounded by Lake Hume. The lake is over here and goes all the way around. I've been pushing up this hill out of Bathanga. The lake view to my right just beautiful and this is why I bike pack and for meeting the people David and Kate at the general store Mandy at the pub just friendly helpful people hello Where are you off to? oh just up the plateau hello you do you? Yeah, YouTuber. Oh, yeah. And, and. and yeah. Who are you? Jared. Jared. Yeah, um, I do a couple of bike packing adventure videos. Oh. Yeah, and, was it Ange, is it? Yeah. And, yeah, I've been following you for a couple of years and I noticed you've watched a couple of my videos, bike packing adventures. We both like going up the mountains, don't we, camping? So. Yeah, what is your channel name? Bikepacking Adventures. Bikepacking Adventures, I'll make sure, because I subscribe to about 400 channels, yeah, so okay. they get lost. But, yeah, uh, they do. Bikepacking Adventures. I only do stuff in the uh, summertime, I'm not a... Yeah, me too. It's too cold and wet in the winter, but... Yeah, oh, it's lovely to meet you. Have you been up to the plateau? Uh, no, I have once, but uh, no, I've just come around from Talangata okay. and then up over past Jarvis Creek. Right. Just Are you based it. around here then? Yeah, I live in Albury. Oh, do you? You're in Albury too? Yeah. We should have an Albury bike packing yeah, group. Yeah, no, well, um, there's, a, there's a couple of groups that ride during the week. Okay. Gravel, gravel groups that ride, so 
Oh, I'm not working the wind. That's why it's near impossible to get out. Now we've got a three day off, yeah, I can weekend. actually get out. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely to meet you, Jared, yeah. and I'll dig out <laughs> your, your YouTubes yeah, no, and that's... make sure I watch them. All right, yeah. Lovely to meet you. So that was Jared of Bikepacking Adventures. Take a look at his YouTube and subscribe if you like to watch bikepacking. How lovely to meet a fellow YouTuber and bikepacker. Fantastic. There's a bit of a climb out of Bathanga, and then there's a massive descent that I've just come down, which is fabulous. It's so beautiful here. The paddocks and the hills are all green. Now here at the bottom of this big descent, and this, bear in mind, is just the beginning of October. There is a creek running here. So if you needed to get water before you, before you get off road, um, here would be the point, I think. I was told by a horse rider I met in Bathanga, there's no water up on the plateau. I've turned a sharp left onto the gravel road, Soul's Road this is called. To my left is the creek, it's called Spring Creek, um, so it's definitely a good choice for water source. This is a slowly ascending gravel road at the moment, so for me, pedalable. Now usually I don't bring sweet things but I've brought biscuits and gummy bears to try and help my bonking problem. So I just have a few every so often. I'm riding through a lot of farmland with cattle where there's cows, there's cow shit and where there's cow shit there's flies. Unless they're flown out of my pants, of course, because I've got the same knickers on that I had on yesterday. And I'm likely to have them on tomorrow as well. Dirty beer. I do pong a bit, actually. Pew. <laughs> but yes, lots of flies. I think I have got to ride down here then all the way up this hill to the top of that hill. It doesn't look big on here, but it's quite a climb. I can't wait till I get there, I'm really excited. For a couple of hours since leaving Bathanga, the skies had been heavily overcast. Although still warm, it was quite nice not to be in the blazing sun this day, but it wasn't to last. So you are running alongside the creek, if you're desperate for water, there's a barbed wire fence, but there's the Spring Creek. I was just dozing off and I heard this almighty crash, scared the hell out of me. And it was, I just caught sight of this bow falling off this tree and this one is this one is sort of hanging down and about to go and that's the one that fell so that really taught me a lesson because last night I nearly camped under one of those massive trees and I thought better of it 
but that is a lesson learned. Ouch, I've split my thumbnail right in my finger. Damn it. So I'm just going to walk. I've got 15 kilometers. I'm not feeling that great. I'm just going to push slowly and see where I get. Where I get is where I get. The world does not end. If I turn around and go back, is still herding his cattle which is a pain because it's a bit of downhill that I could be using so having been told there is no water opportunities I'm thinking this is one and I should take advantage of it so I'm going to filter some of this water Hope there are no snakes. Whoa, that's really slippery. Less than half a kilometre on, and there's another water source. Um, perhaps these only run in the spring and winter, but they're good for me now. And I'm pushing at the moment because I can't keep out of the sun whilst riding the bike. So I'm just going to push. There's something wrong with my tummy. It was gurgling earlier when I had to rest. Now it's all swollen up. I think I must have got some dirty water in my water bottle when I was filtering. Jesus, wake up call number two. So this tiny dead branch just fell off this tree. I saw it fall and my God did that land with a thump. That slammed down. I always thought something that size couldn't do any harm. That would certainly knock you out, if not kill you. Jesus, it's a bit scary. That's my second tree wake up call today. So we've got a long downhill section now, which means I'm going to have a long uphill section or a steep one. But at least it's killing the kilometres. Beautiful views of the lake. It's, or it could be the Murray or the Mitta, Mitta Mitta River. Not sure which. Beautiful. I'm guessing this is a, a bus shelter for the kids school run. So I'm gonna have a little rest here and gather some strength. My stomach is sore. stopped at this lovely lady's farm. Um, she's getting me a drink of water and topping up my bottle. But why I stopped was I want to stick my head under her sprinkler, just there. So I'm going to do that now. <sighs> I've totally overheated. Okay, so I stopped at this farm here. Got a drink of water, had a sit down, soaked my head in water. 
a lady gave me a flannel her name's AD she's expecting twins she's got a four-year-old a two-year-old and expecting twins and her husband Paul uh, all very lovely people um, he says it's a very steep climb now um, so be prepared he said he wouldn't go I'll see how it goes I can turn back I'm not frightened of failure as you well know So for nearly 20 kilometres I've been riding to Jarvis Creek Regional Park. Not what I expected, but I'm in the park now and this is where I have to start climbing. Let's get on with it. This is more like it. Beautiful woodland, lush green grass, lots of shade, birdsong, solitude. Just what I needed. It was a long old ride to get here. So I left AD and Paul's farm and got straight onto the fire road up Jarvis Creek Regional Park. Uh, it's very pretty, nice woodland, some nice views through the trees. I've totally cooked myself in the heat, so I'm stopping, having a drink, something to eat and a rest. So this is a bit like Spain. It's actually not that hot. When I rode in Spain, it wasn't that hot. Um, high 20s it's 26 degrees now is the fact that you're in direct sunlight with little shade for long periods and that's what uh, kind of kills me but anyway I'm gonna have this rest and hopefully I'll get to the top in the next couple of hours That's disappointing. So my route wasn't to the picnic ground. There's another two and a half kilometers to go. Uh, that has really battered me. I thought I was nearly there. Anyway, one mile. I just need to go one more mile. Let's get doing it. There's the sign to the picnic area, just here. So you turn left and it's just down here. This is the picnic area. 
surrounded by trees, slightly worrying, I'm not going to camp under any of those. Um, there's a fire pit, a picnic table. I'm not sure whether I want to camp here at all. I might just have a look a bit further up, see what there is. I'm really tired though. Perhaps I'll camp just here. Oh, listen to me. I'll camp just here. Stop messing around. Hi, so it's just gone seven o'clock. Um, I've got the tent set up. I've set it up here. The picnic area is just down there down this little track here um, but I think I'd be safer here there's no trees um, it's the safest spot I could see so I've set my tent up I'm just making myself some ravioli I've got a cup of tea cheers um, I'm exhausted I'm wondering how I'm getting home tomorrow because I've got to do this two days worth of journeys in one day by the picnic area. There's this big pit with dirty stagnant water in it. I mean, it's quite big. It's not a dam, I don't think. Um, and there's loads of mozzies about, so there's a pain in the butt. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get something to eat, get some shut eye um, and deal with tomorrow in the morning. Hi. It's about two o'clock in the morning. You've guessed it, I can't sleep because I completely collapsed <laughs> um, when I got to camp. Not too early, I went to sleep about, I don't know, nine o'clock. I've just woke up. I can highly recommend bringing some raisin bread with you. You can toast it in your pot like that. Works really well. And... Uh, it's quite delicious when you want a snack and something filling. Um, also, I can recommend the, um, what did I have this morning? I bought a tiny little bit of olive oil and had a piece of fried bread. And that was lovely too. Um, so I can recommend them as camp food. Um, that was really nice. I'm gonna have some more in the morning. So anyway, I think I've worked out um, the loop home so I won't go back the way I came I'm going to loop um, continue on the way I was going and then get out onto George's Creek Road a road I've been down before bikepacking and then I'll have to track around the lake for some time till I get to Bell Bridge um, but it will cut out about I think it's about 700 meters in climbing and also um, I think about 10 kilometers in distance and uh, that would be preferable <laughs> uh, than coming back the way I came because that was going to be hard work and I just don't think I could face doing all of that all the way home in one day. See you in the morning. I had a reasonable night's sleep. I woke up a couple of times, but I wasn't cold. It was so much warmer than the night before, and the only difference was I had an extra pair of um, thermal bottoms on, but I don't think it was that. I just don't think it was as cold. Not here in the woodland anyway, because it's quite sheltered, whereas I was quite exposed and very low down, heavy, heavy dew at that um, recreation centre. I've got a bit of a mechanical here. My screw has fallen out of my camera mount. So, I'm going to put a cable tie in there. I don't know if I've got one thin enough. I've got quite a thin one here. That's lucky. Is it too thin? 
So that one, the next size up is that one. No, that won't go through. So the bottom hole is a smaller diameter. I'm going to have to use this one. I don't think it's, it doesn't look very strong and it's quite quite a pull I have to put on this. I love it when I can actually fix a repair. It makes carrying all these extra things like this that has like everything on it worthwhile. So when I have problems, things I've forgotten, things I need to replace, I always write them down um, because you do forget. So thin cable ties are a definite thing I want to carry. I need screws for camera. Um, so I write them down and then when I come to either bike pack again or as soon as I get back I go through it and um, I don't have to try and remember all the little things. So not much on the list this time, thank the Lord. And I keep that handy in my little um, top tube bag. Hi, Sir Campbell packed up. His bay is ready to go. And I think I'm ready to go. So as I said, I'm doing a loop um, to get home. So I'm gonna continue the way I came as in I come from that direction so I'm going to keep going that way on this road it's called Plateau Road and then I should turn on to the sealed road of George's Creek Road god I hope that's open because if I get all the way down there and it's not I don't know how I'm going to get home um, anyway let's get moving It's exactly eight o'clock and I've set off down Plateau Road or as they say here, Plateau. Beautiful woodland, quite mature. There was wildlife during the night. I didn't see it, I could hear it. There are cockatoos here. Um, making a racket from time to time but they weren't chasing me I'm around four kilometers down from the picnic area. Look at this beautiful tree. It's very big, beautiful. Precariously balanced on the edge of this steep bank, which leads down to a creek. There's a creek running down there. So if you were desperate for water, there is some here.
just warming up in the sun's rays. So we've got farmland to my left. Very interesting hills over there. Um, I'm guessing that's Mount Granya across the way. So we must be somewhere near the end of Jarvis Creek Regional Park and I should come out on um, George's Creek Road, which if you watched my High Country Rail Trail bikepacking adventure, um, you'd know that I come back down George's Creek Road and camped overnight on a dairy farm with uh, Rhett, Dane and Graham. And that is the end of Jarvis Creek Regional Park. I've now hit George's Creek Road, so I need to get on. And it's road all the way home, around, I think it's around 40 kilometers, all surface road. So quite undulating, but not as bad as if I went back the way I came. There was nearly a thousand meters of climbing if I went back that way. This way is 200, not bad. Let's get on. There's a creek running here. I presume it's George's Creek, but I could be wrong. So if you wanted to filter water, there is some there. Surprised there's no sign to say this is Jarvis Creek Regional Park. So this side of it, Unless I was just too tired last night to be able to admire where I was walking, possibly that is the case. It is a very nice place and I would come again, um, but I wouldn't ride from Bathanga and definitely not from Lavington. <laughs> so what am I saying about the click stand? I'm saying thumbs up. Last time I was out Mount Lawson, my bike fell heavily, five times at least. This time, zero. So this is the click stand. They make it specifically to the height of your bike. So to take it apart, just like a tent pole, you get a strap with Velcro on it, hold it together, and that's it. So I Velcro it on there with my knife. So the click stand, a good buy, for sure. Is what I'm talking about downhill. My first view of the lake in the distance. Now the storm seems to be to the east of me, running down perhaps the Lawson Grania sort of valley. Because it's not here where I'm going. Thank the Lord. Although it might be better than sunshine. <laughs> it's beautiful, lush and green. On this bike packing tour, this is where I rode. Jarvis Creek Regional Park.
the best thing about the click stand is when you're hungry or you need to stop you can stop anywhere you don't have to look for a tree to lean it against or a fence and uh, it makes a big difference 10 o'clock Monday morning I've got all day to get home I've got another I don't know 30 odd kilometers to go and uh, then I can reflect on this um, on this little bikepacking trip George's Creek Road turns onto Murray River Road. We've got a long way to go on this, all the way to Bellbridge. So now I'm on the Murray River Road and so we're following the contour of Lake Hume which is just through the trees here to my right. I've just stopped in this uh, little lay-by. It's called uh, Wise's Creek. There isn't a creek here and you can't get down to the lake but it's just a little rest stop. Some pretty bushland lush grass. I know I keep saying lush grass but usually all around here it's just yellow and brown and we've had heavy rains for the last autumn winter and spring two years on the trot and everywhere is so very green and I'm just feeling so lucky to be bikepacking at this time and seeing just how beautiful it is and giving thanks really that I am able to do it because you you don't get this when you drive you don't get you don't hear the bird song you don't smell the dead animals um, you get that now and again but you just don't see um, the beauty the beauty of the wild flowers and the green grass and the massive trees and the two branches I saw fall yesterday, quite scary. And I also give thanks for the sun. We take it for granted, don't we? A moment when it's not there. Um, but it's amazing, it is. And when you're in a mountain and you're really cold and then you get into a sunny bit, you really do give thanks for that sunshine. Anyway, I'm just having a little rest and a drink. I've not got very far. Um, I think I've done about 18 kilometers. As I cross the Bithanga Bridge, I cross back into New South Wales. I've been in Victoria the rest of the time. It we have like... a nice headwind cancelling out this lovely descent. Do me a little detour. I'm going to go back to the cafe at Lake Hume Village. It's only down there. 
I've come from down here, from um, the Thanga Bridge. I'll just go down there, see if the cafe's open, have a rest. And then make my way home. a bit of a sore tummy um can't remember when was it saturday night or sunday anyway yeah sunday but it cleared up had a bit of a dodgy bottom last night and today doesn't feel too bad at all just bloated and gurgly just pulled into lavington stopped and got a dairy free magnum Nom nom. Phew. It clouds over and then it gets really sunny and my my wrists are burnt. I didn't realise I've put cream on now, but too late. Getting closer to home. Another perhaps two kilometres and then I'll be home. Here we are, home sweet home. Whew, that last couple of kilometers was hard work. So how annoying, I just realized I've had my camera on zoomed, linear, for God knows how long. So sorry about my big face in the camera. <laughs> it wasn't intended, I'm a dipstick, Jesus. Oh well, it is what it is. Oh, now it's a good job we haven't got smell of vision because I have had these clothes on for three days, I haven't took them off. These, same socks, same knickers, same shorts, same bra, top, all the same. I stink. So I need to jump in the shower. So that was my three days, two nights ride to Jarvis Creek Regional Park. It was a great ride. I did get worried that I'd bitten off more than I could chew, realising I couldn't go back the way I came because I wouldn't have done it in one day. It took me two days to get there. How could I possibly do it in a day? Um, but I rerouted and it worked out absolutely fine. I had a wonderful time. Um, I can't wait to do it again. So I got home, I stripped the bike. You have to do things like clean out your water bottles, wash your pan, wash and air any equipment that needs washing and airing. And um, I need to really pack my bike now. And then next time the weather's good, I'm going to try packing up the late pack bag and getting going at short notice. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thank you for joining me on this ride. I do hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a like if you did. It really does help the channel. Um, and also, if you would subscribe, if you haven't already, that would be fantastic. I'll close this video here, and until next time, it's a goodbye for now. 
Lo cha cha cha. Lo cha cha cha. Apprenons le cha cha cha. Apprenons le cha cha cha. Nous commençons par l'étude du pas de base. Yeah.